Hey, everybody. Welcome to the show. I'm Sal. I'm joined today. Tom King. He's back. Welcome back to the show, man. How are you? How wonderful to be here. You see how much energy I'm projecting? I've had yes. the, long Sal, I've had the longest day. I'm exhausted. <laughs> it's yes. 10 o'clock here on the East Coast. It is. It is. And... It's uh, Yeah. My day's just getting started. I'm kidding. No, I'm, I'm oh, very yeah. much ready for bed. I'm not wearing jeans. There's pajamas underneath. I'm definitely ready for bed after this. <laughs> I'm not doing the studio. I'm, I'm here at home. I'm your first interview. Next, you have Samuel L. Jackson. Then you can go to sleep. That's right. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> no. And Sam and I go way back. Yeah, uh, ever sense. since uh, his cameo in Goodfellas, we've been, we've been tight. That makes sense. Yeah. <laughs> right. He didn't have a cameo. He was one of the main robbers. I feel like that was beyond cameo. Uh, did he have more than four lines, really? I mean, I don't know. Is that, I the, think that's is a, that a strict definition? For me, I was I remember being like, oh, that's Sa when he died. I'm like, that's Samuel Jackson. Like, that's when I recognized him. So I don't he, know. But he has kind of a key role. He's the first one to betray the group when he, he was, is. Yeah. So yeah. I feel I feel it's beyond cameo. I feel he should get some credit. Uh, yeah, Anyways, I'm, this has been Goodfellas talk on YouTube. Yes, <laughs> yes. Well, hey, listen. Dude, at least we didn't do the. We, at least we haven't talked about Predator yet. Nobody needs to hear about that. Um, <laughs> we'll talk about it offline. Yes, that'll be that'll be what we talk about for an hour after the show. Uh, <laughs> I am. Uh, I, I'm, I'm so excited to talk to you because one yes, of our first interviews. Do. Well, just just in general, but uh, one of our first interviews. Yes. We uh we you, you tied it in with I think I it was the. <laughs> I'm already was, feeling guilty. What did I say? I know. No, it was um I don't remember if you likened it to the Beatles. I don't remember what the line was, but it was uh are you doing your best work? That was the like Oh. That was the line. That was your like I you know, you feel good about it if you're like I'm am I doing my best work? I think you're in it right now. And I think it's nice to think that like it's been the best each time. <laughs> and so now we're in it right now. Like from Supergirl to Human Target to Gotham City it has been just good shit. <laughs> Wait, well, I I look forward to the fall. I just can't wait to no, be I, washed it, up. Yes, and, it's going to be great. No, and then you'll be on more. Uh, you'll be more available, certainly. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I'm totally available 24-7. Just call me. Yeah. That'll be great. Uh, I just I just watched uh, Babylon, which is one of those like uh, Oscar kind of movies. Yeah. Uh, it, it It's not very good, but... <laughs> No offense, to, it looked like they worked really hard to make it. So good job. Uh, oh. But but there's like a whole speech because it's all about uh, it's 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 basically a remake of Singing in the Rain, but like sad. It's like <laughs> do, like <laughs> less singing. Yeah, yeah. It's like what if we Singing in Rain with with no singing or dancing and just the sad parts and made it a movie. So yeah. uh, uh, and but but there is a, a, a Brad Pitt has a has a great like. Or, um, moment where he sort of realizes that he's over the hill and and has produced his best work and has to sort of deal with that and mm -hmm. uh, i was watching this and being like oh my god am i there my breath like i watch it with an entire <laughs> guilt so nice. um anyways yeah, he and he comes to a sad end spoilers so oh I, great I, I look forward to my moment of i can't write superman anymore I'm gonna go to <laughs> no i think we're, we're, we're well the fact that uh each of your series goes from anywhere between six and eight issues uh, means that you only get to reach the end like one small segment at a time. You know, normally it's twelve issues, but this, these sixes have been really slowing your pace. I think, which is great. That's true. I, they they they've got basically got rid of the twelve issue format. Like after, I mean, Jorge and I are doing it for Danger Street, but then I think it's done. Like I think it's been. It's you retired. think it's over? Yeah. Because is it I mean, just yeah? It's the art. It, I mean, no offense to the artists, but it there DC has a lot of trouble finding the right artists who can keep that schedule mm. it's been it's 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 been sort of a burden on uh, um on them and they, they they hate i mean it's like it, with human target would take that six month break in the middle which was the best thing to do for the series of course um but but they hate doing that to schedule wise like dc mm. just does not like because they because it's you know has to do with budgets and yearly like excel spreadsheets i don't understand right. um so it's 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 getting harder and harder as the as in, in my time, the generation, the, the the great artists, the most incredible artists have gotten a little slower. And so mm. as, as a result of that, it's it's a little harder to do 12 edge series. Yeah, yeah. I, I hope it's not just because, I guess it's for cost-cutting measures as well. I mean, we just, uh, during the uh, during the lockdowns and pandemics and whatnot, uh, we got Supergirl. And um, I know that, uh, you know, there was a paper shortage and there was like costs that were, you know, that needed to be concerned and stuff like that. Uh, but I imagine, yeah, just giving people more time. 
just me. It's fine. You, you talk about Supergirl and, and Human Target being good. I wrote those both during the pandemic back to back. So like, you know, a year and a half ago. So nice. I, I, if you're saying those are peak, but I've already peaked and I'm already falling. So this is, you're talking to a, a year and a half ago, Tom. I don't know what the fuck he was drinking, but I wish. Yeah, I fair enough. Fine. Well, no, well, the last time we were talking about it, we, we, we had, we, I think we were talking about Rorschach and you were like, I was in a dark place, but I think we're getting into a happier place. And I love that we're in a happier place with, uh, with, with Human Target, which is just a, just a knee slapper of a book. It's just a joy fest the whole time. Wait um, a second. Human Target's fun. I mean, it's no, like it is fun. Romance and kissing on its sex. Yeah. <laughs> Lo- Love Everlasting's. Mo- I got more kissing, I think. And uh, uh, they, 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 there's 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 a fair amount of kissing. There is more. Target. There is more kissing and beyond in Human Target. Yeah, uh, it's fine. Uh, 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 Greg, Greg, you know, I submit. I do my scripts. Greg, Greg doesn't do um, uh, uh, like thumbnails or anything. He just he doesn't need to. He can draw perfectly. I, I would trust him, him to do whatever. Yeah, entirely. <laughs> Everything he takes my scripts and makes them much much better. But the one thing I've always noticed is he takes out the sex scenes. He makes them sexier in kind of 50s ways. But like mm. I wrote so many sex scenes that got turned into like subtle Greg sexy scenes. I like that. That are, that are much better. But um, yeah. Now, was that uh, what you speaking to your collaboration with Greg Small- Smallwood, who's again, best work so far has been. Best in work. Get that guy in Incredible. Eisner. If you're out there please. voting, please. This guy <laughs> needs a best artist Eisner. He yes. He deserves it. I've never seen art like this in a book. Uh, it's brilliant. Just utterly brilliant. Greg, Greg's putting the uh uh making a bar for when to jump over yeah really. now how how did that uh come about did you go i want greg smallwood and that was the end of it because i know that that's how a lot of your collaborations have gone over the last couple of years it's been God. i want bill Casevli. i want uh <laughs> this you know, is not at all true is it not that vibe i feel like i i no, you we talked about this so last time power. you were like i want you know i want clayton crane to do this I, not clayton crane uh clayton uh clayton cowls my letter well, no. Well, Clayton Cowles is a great letter. That's true. I do. I do pull to get Clayton on everything. That's yeah. why you do that. <laughs> uh, but uh, no. Generally speaking, I mean, nine times out of ten, uh, the, usually the, the editor has sort of tagged me and put me with the artist. Mm. There are exceptions. Uh, uh, Jorge Fornes, who I worked with, I sort of brought him to Batman. Clay Man. Uh, yes, Clay Man. I I reached out to him and and got him. Um, but you know, but but Mitch and I were teamed up by an editor in the very really? beginning on Sheriff, and uh, and Greg and I were teamed up and uh, by the great editor Ben Ben Abernathy, and uh, and Bill Bill Keese and I were teamed up by uh, the great editor Jamie Rich. So no kidding, I didn't know that that was uh, that was like kismet. Someone put you guys together. That's great. That was complete. I mean, I, I guess there's like a in a probably an approval process on both sides where they have to say, yeah, sure, I'll I'll willing to work with Tom, and I have to say, sure, I'm willing to work with Bill Keese. But it was like it was, I mean, in both. In Greg's case and in Bilky's case, I didn't. Um, I mean, it wasn't like, oh my God, I have to think and should I put this Eisner winning artist on this book who can draw yeah. beautifully? It wasn't like a hard decision that I should get any credit for. It Naturally. Was like, yes. I, uh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Was, if someone pitches you a slow pitch down the middle, should I swing? Yeah, maybe I'll swing. So, yeah, yeah, probably. Right. Yeah. If I can hit this home run, which has been a uh, human target. Well, what about uh, Phil Hester on Gotham City year one? Phil, I mean, I guess that was more of a process because we went through a lot, a lot of artists. Ben really? Abbott, he was also the editor on that. Um, it, 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 yeah, like dozens and do, not the probably over over twelve. Like, how about this person? How about this person? This person's schedule didn't work. This person, and it was it was trying to find the right look and the right style. And Phil came in sort of late in the game, and I didn't think we'd be able to get him. And uh, so yeah, so he he came up after we had sort of not rejected, but, but, but sort of gone through some options that we didn't th- think would work. Mm. Um, and, and uh, yeah. And Phil was, that was a, just an utter, another blessing to get Phil on that. Who knew that he could, he, he, he turned that thing into something that really stings. Yeah. Again, like it's best work. Like it is some of the best stuff I've seen from Phil Hester in years. And Phil Hester is always bringing his a game on stuff. All these artists that we've mentioned, I'm, I'm so excited to talk like to just every time that I pick up one of these issues, I'm just like, Oh, what a treat. Like those from the covers to the panel layouts to the, to the character designs, it's all been just fabulous. And I'm so excited about all of them. Uh, and I'm sad that they're ending like human target just wrapped up. I'm sad oh, it's over. I know. But I'm now sad here it is. Too. Uh, where did that come from? I know that we've talked before where I've asked you, I'm like, what, you know, what, how do you get to pick a project? And typically somebody lobs you a character and they go, what about this guy? Or what about this person? And you're like, all right, 
is that still the case? <laughs> or were you like, I really respond to Chance and I want to do this story? Uh, this you, you can you can still look up this tweet if you know how to Google it right. But uh, some people often back in the day when Twitter was more fun than it is today. Uh-huh. Uh huh. <laughs> yeah, I remember those days. Yeah, my Twitter feed is boring now. I apologize. It's just buy my book or buy someone else's book. It's That's fun. actually so it's much safer promotion. than anything else. No, you're in a good space. Uh, I was actually just remarking. Somebody was talking to me the other like today about how uh, Josh Williamson his Twitter feed is so curated. It's just like, hey, new Superman. See you yeah. tomorrow. <laughs> yeah. Mine's mine's not so different. Not that I was like so vocal about anything before, but you know, I would whatever. It was it was a little more fun. Yeah. Uh, but in, in those days, someone people would be like, uh, Tom, do, do you want to write Wonder Woman? And I was like, Oh yeah, sure. Panel one, Wonder Woman looks out the rain, cries, finished. You know? <laughs> like I, I had this kind of running joke. It wasn't the funniest joke, but I did. And someone said, uh, do you Tom, would you want to write human target? I was like, Great, panel one, human target looks out the window. <laughs> get shot Finn you know like right and, and that was it was just a stupid Twitter joke it was nothing more than that and uh Ben Abernathy the same editor we were talking about before uh calls me up I remember I was like on the treadmill and I was like oh what's we had never worked together before and he's like Tom I read your tweet would you really want to write human target <laughs> and I thought he was joking I honestly did and I said yeah sure uh and so he's like okay great and he's like he's like and he called me back like do you have a pitch for that <laughs> <laughs> yeah and so I came up like, with a what? pitch, which, which, like I often do, I stole it from an old movie called DOA, um, which is in the public domain, so you can't sue me, huh? So it's okay. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> and uh, with DOA is an old noir. I, mean, I know it's still from old movies, but it's an old noir, and that's the best plot of any noir. Any movie ever, someone gets poisoned, has to solve his own murder before he dies. Right. Uh, and so I, so I, 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 I pitched, I was like, great. Again, I was not taking it all serious. I was like, "Who? No, Human Target will never get greenlit. Nobody cares about this character." And he's like, "I got Greg Smallwood to do it." And I was like, "Yeah, that sounds." I was right. like, I looked, at, I looked at stuff. So I was like, "Yeah, his stuff looks really good." And um, but like I was kind of cursory because I really didn't take it seriously. Sure. And he sent me the first cover of the because he had the pitch and we had sort of that the, you know, it was going to be a murder mystery. The suspects of the Justice League International, which I just picked because I wanted to work with Ice because my kid loves Ice. Yes. And and so uh uh. It, it was and it's the cover of the first issue the same cover and it was mind-blowing it was nothing like i it was like oh i hadn't, I hadn't written a word of the series yet yeah. and it was it was him you know with that sort of george clooney kind of cool yeah and with sort of all these off off and as soon as he just drew chance in that sort of i don't know 1961 but still like uh, oceans 11 yeah very modern of, yet classic very, yeah, yeah modern yet classic i was like Oh, oh, okay. All right. This could be this could be something special. And based on that one image, I wrote all 12 issues before I got a second image. Um, nice. And uh and that's that's how Human Target came to be. I yeah. And so so that that book was a was a goddamn uh dessert every single uh time that that book came out. I was like, this is this is something else. Like every time that you just get another issue. I'm like, holy crap! That, and, and I, I don't know what's my favorite issue, but I will say that the one I'm sure everyone remembers is the Batman issue, <laughs> because because there's like, no Batman in it. There, no, there is Batman. <laughs> Batman is in every page. That's true. Like Batman, the, the shadow of Batman on the front cover is like <laughs> thematically relevant to the whole issue, where it's like he's looming over every single moment in the book. It's like, oh my god! And I know that like, that was like a writing challenge. You were like, all right. I'm going to do a whole issue about Batman, which Batman does not appear in every in any page. In fact, he won't even be there. He was never there the whole time. Like, oh, just, thank you, such a such a such a joy. Um, and every issue is like that. The Guy Gardner stuff. I remember that was actually a very interesting uh, dilemma. Speaking of Twitter and people being upset, uh, the Guy Gardner stuff and how uh, there was the bait and switch about Guy Gardner and uh, people go. Yeah, well, like, that's not a bait and switch. That's a cliffhanger. There's a difference between a bait and a switch and a cliffhanger. Mm -hmm. I, I mean. It, if, like you can't say as as a as a person, oh, he was hanging off the cliff, and then in the in the next episode he didn't fall. Right. Like, I, I feel like that that's your job as a comic book writer is to make you go, oh my god, at the end, and, the and then buy the next make, issue, absolutely, and then buy the next issue. Yeah. So I, I don't think that's a that's a bait and switch. And I, you know, people were, if, of course, there was a six month gap between that, so that did, that was a whole thing. But yeah. but it was a, it was a book about a guy who literally fakes his death, and it was it was a 
a death. So I was like, come on, you can put this together. I, I, I have, I have confidence in you fans. I'm not, wor- I'm not too worried. Well, and the other thing was like, it's, it is set in a time that has passed. Yes, that's true. And guy has continued. So <laughs> draw your own conclusions, but I feel like he's going to make it. Uh, but it's that this book, oh, it's going to be in a vacuum. You can read it anytime and you're going to be, hopefully it gets people excited, not just for Smallwood's art, your writing and this character, but also uh, makes people go back and pick up the DiMatteis Giffen uh, Justice League International books and gets excited about those characters. I remember us talking and you being like, my kid really loves ice. And I'm like, what an interesting pull. And then shortly thereafter, we got the human target and I'm like, hey, <laughs> it's ice. And she has more agency and things to do than ever before. <laughs> I know. And then we, we wrote like the sexiest ice book of all time. I can't give it to my nine year old to read. He, as a yeah, book. He can read that. <laughs> but when he gets of age, yes, that when book, he gets of age, yes, that book you, you are you are going to create a problem. Uh, but yes, it's, I've uh, I've never had, I, the way Greg drew ice. It, uh, no matter your or however you think about the world, you yes. fall in love with her. Absolutely. Just, you, you, you just can't help it. It's just, there's something about her that is amazing. Yeah. Um, yeah. Uh, so, yeah, go ahead. I, I just, I, I, I that, that's all the credit to Greg. He puts so much life into that character. Yeah. Uh, Gotham City Year One is a book that uh, I have heard from uh, you that uh, is not uh, as, as popular as it ought to be. No, nobody reads that book. But this is the same complaint I had about Supergirl, which is yes. now my best-selling graphic novel. So who yeah, knows? Yeah, she willikers. That- <laughs> <laughs> All it needs is a goddamn movie behind it, and suddenly it'll sell like hotcakes, which it should have in the beginning because Supergirl is, again, one of those perfect books. It's one of those books that just, like, deserves all the accolades it gets. No notes, 10 out of 10. Gotham City is one of those books as well. Yeah, the, 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 the wind. Yeah, so I, I have confidence in Gotham City. That it, that it will find its audience eventually. Mm-hmm. Yeah, but nobody buys it. Nobody buys that poor book. And God, I love it. And I wish you'd buy it so I could write more of it. You know, it's, now, it's, is, that, is that the situation? Because I noticed that it's six issues, which is, I think, the shortest of all of your runs now. And uh, is that one of those, like, if they bought six more, it would have been 12? Or is that a... Uh, no, 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 no. We, we had was, six. and It was yeah. always... In, and it's 28 pages. With, you know, Human Target's also 28 pages. Yeah. Um, so it was always planned to be six issues. Uh, I, I've done it. Uh, uh, Killing Time with six issues. Oh yeah, and uh, there's another one that's coming up that hasn't been announced at six issues. Mm. Um, so I've done I've done a few of these six issue series. This is this. Um, uh, Mitch and I are working on a four issue one now. No kidding. That's the, that's the Brave and the Bold is is four issues. Oh, and uh, but but yes, it it was never like if a lot of people buy this, we'll have a seventh issue. It was always a. a a beginning opening and meant to be a standalone trade like human target, like Supergirl. All the cool. Supergirl is morning continuity. Um, mm-hmm. but like Mr. Mirror, just, 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 just a trade. You can sit down, you know, start it on the toilet, finish it on the couch. You know, you, <laughs> can, you can spend a nice afternoon with this trade. Yeah. Uh, and, and, but, 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 but if you have know, a bajillion people bought it, which hopefully they eventually will, then I, then I probably could do a sequel. Um, cause you know, I would write, you know, I could write seventies, because it takes place in the 60s, so I, I could write a 70s version, 80s version. I mean, I do the whole Ed Brubaker and walk him up through time. Oh, uh, I like that. Uh, of, of, of Slam Bradley. And, and mm-hmm. just, uh, yeah, I, I would, when I was writing that book, it was one of those things where I couldn't believe it existed, and I knew I'd never be able to do it again. Mm. Because it, it's a DC comic, um, but it's, there's no superheroes in it. There's no, it's not, uh, I mean, even Human Target, which is, which is a noir book about a mystery and stuff, there's a lot of superhero elements in it. It's, yes. a deconstruction, it, it's a more of a deconstruction of noir. It's kind of making fun of itself as it goes, but it's sort of serious. This is not a deconstruction. This is a straight up noir, like, yeah. you know, nine o'clock HBO series you'd see. <laughs> um, it's, you know, it's, it's a period piece. It's about race. Yeah. Uh, and, and I, and, and it, it has some punching. There's some, but it's, the point of, you know, when you write mainstream comic books, which I've done for 10 years now, you're constantly being like, I need to move this towards a moment of violence. You know, you're right. like there has this, this, that was this not about moments of violence, but sort of moments between people. Um, so I, I was, as I wrote it, I would, I would send each draft. Like, They'll never let me do this again. Might as well have fun while I'm doing it. Right. Get away with doing all the things that don't 
get greenlit in mainstream writing. Yes. Uh, I, but I will say, I think there's violence in every single issue. And there the is, violence it's itself is, is haunting. Uh, it is. God, Gotham City, you're one. Everybody buy Gotham City, you're one. It's such a good series. It's over. I mean, there's one more issue left. There's one more uh, issue. It's, but, oh, my God, it's a harrowing issue. It was so, so, so Phil tweeted out um, the, the twist Tom pulls off in the, in the, in the, in the, the I, I'm not bragging. He, I'm, I come up as an idiot in this story. Uh, <laughs> uh, pulls off in, in issue six was like one of the best things I've ever seen, which was very nice, but I didn't know what he was referring to. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, I didn't know what I pulled off that was good, and I got the lettering draft, and I was so afraid to change any of it. Yeah, I didn't know if that was which which thing he was talking about. Right. Um. So I I, I hope I still got whatever he wanted in, and I didn't pull it out in the draft. Yeah, uh, I, I, I. This is one of those things where I, I'm like, I don't want to know anything about it. I love those moments where I'm like, nope, everybody just, I turn off my everything and then I just sit and read. Uh, I love those comics. It's one of my favorite uh, comic experiences is when I'm like, oop, new issue. And it's so rare that it happens, but the fact that it does is such a good, it's, it's a good sign. It means like we're still alive. Uh, what, um, well, the final issue has some shocking, big, big moments, big goth. This is an incontinuity series. There's big Gotham Im impacts for Gotham and sort of really? origin story. Well, there was a um, lot of, uh, the, 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 I think two issues ago was when we got uh, specific origins for, uh, for classic Batman institutions. Um, I assume that the uh, owl metaphors are meant to be deliberate, that there's a, uh, you know, larger world associated with that. Uh, God damn. I, I'm sorry. I'm just. Uh, I don't. I don't mean to, to to get into it, but it's just such a such a dope book. And, and I remember uh, discounting it because I was like, Gotham City or one. Okay, you know, I, you know, I don't have to buy. No, everything. no, I can. I feel the same way. And no, try, I, try, I, try, I debated whether like if I called it Slam Bradley, would that make it even more appealing? Nope, I don't. Think it would so, not right? sell. <laughs> No, but what happened was this was that we were near Comic Con. You were you you were kind enough to film a, a silly sequence for one of my uh, one of my shows, and at the end of it, you went, "Oh, and by the way, since you didn't buy it, here's Gotham City or one." And I was like, "How did you know I didn't buy it?" And you're like, "Cause no one's buying it." That's and uh, <laughs> so I took it home and I'm like, "All you right, I guess I'll read it." Sat down, and I was like, "Oh, son of a, you did it again." Because that happened so many times where I'm like, with with Rorschach, I read the first issue, I'm like pass and then i read the whole damn thing in one sitting and i was like it gave me nightmares and then we had to do our show where i was like you all right so i have to yell at you about talk about what you did with rorschach uh danger street i'm still i i like it i'm not sold i understand Sell no, i understand danger street what's i understand uh, it's a lot of characters doing a it lot, is of, a lot things. of characters and, and reading it monthly i think is a challenge yeah um but it, it, it it hits it hits transcendence it gets there it gets it the, gets i don't want to ever say because i always re write each issue to be its own issue so i don't want to be like oh read it because when you get to issue eight it'll be good that's a right right no Tomper. but I, I i love that book i love where it goes i love where it wraps up and the, um it, 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 it as things get wilder and crazier the themes get deeper and um and the comic book becomes sort of about something which, which mm. I appreciate. At the, at the beginning, it's just about who is this person, who is this person, but then it, be, it becomes sort of about this, you know, what connects these people, right? And, and and what that means for everybody, what evil is, and what good is, and all that stuff. With yeah. These concepts. The the sequence between High Father and Gar and Dark Side was uh, unexpected. Let's put it that way, but fantastic. <laughs> uh, but I loved it. No, it was one of those moments where it's like, hey, this is a attention grabbing. Oh, I guess I should be paying closer attention. Uh, that upcoming uh is it out yet i don't think so the dark side uh uh serial cereal cover yeah <laughs> but that, that's what i like about this book is that there's huge moments cosmic moments with dark side and you turn the page and there's lady cop and her printer doesn't work <laughs> and yes i love lady cop that that that's part of the book is sort of saying that all these characters exist in the same universe and that her printer not working is affecting dark side saying the world is going to end and these right. two things are connected by strings yeah and 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 that's what all superhero comics are about that like this stupid event affected this and, and we live in this world where we're all tied together and that's what danger street is about it's about all superhero comics all and right to me, all right to me, you to got me, to me it's a big thing um it's, yeah and and it's gorgeously drawn by jorge Fornes. um yeah. we just turned in pages today which looks so beautiful um and yeah and yeah i, I don't know to, to i to, to me I, I it's it's one of the best things I've written. I'm super proud of it, but I can understand my kid. My kid is reading it. My nine year old is reading no it. No kidding, and, really. And he he really liked the first issue. And second, he's like not enough action. <laughs> <laughs> 
Yeah, yeah. That's actually not a bad litmus test for uh, for the audience at large. I really appreciate the uh, the, the note. Just yeah. not enough action. You know, uh, since you are now uh, a big shot Hollywood uh, stooge. Yes, I am. I, I imagine Texas you're probably Hollywood stooge. Yes, uh, I assume you're going to be getting notes that are very similar to the to the one from your nine year old, which is like oh, not enough action. And, yes. Uh, very much. <laughs> well, no, I've been, I, you know, I've, I've been a Hollywood failure for many years now. Don't, yes, don't, that's true. don't get me wrong. Yeah, no, I've, I've, I've run into a lot of Hollywood brick walls. I've. Yes, yes. Which I is, I think, uh, you, you can't. No, unless you are the son of a director, you will only encounter brick walls until you eventually break through one or die. You know what's depressing is I, I am a nepo baby. I don't get the well, advantages because my mother was a studio executive. Yeah, exactly. At Warner she's a, Brothers. Yeah, yeah. But she's dead. True. She does nothing for me. She's oh, just, well, that's she just that yeah, lies there in her grave. And well, I that's yeah, no good to me at all. Uh, it's haunting, yes. Uh, but she's also she was a and and she, we've talked about this before. Her influence on so many things that we take for granted. Uh, she, God, she was in she was integral in the uh, development of home media yes, with, yes. Uh, the dvd dvds home videos blu-rays that's all my mom she was yeah on the cut, cutting edge of all that stuff. see that's the thing is you don't lean into that see you, you can't be a nepo baby unless you 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 bank on the high you know if you just show up and you're like oh, i'm tom king i have these i have these awards and i wrote these things yeah what, what who gives a shit about that no 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 my, my mom this is her name you gotta drop the name should. even that we you know we're watching each other on these little boxes my mother yes. did the was 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 uh one of the people first put um ratios and, and screens you know because when we were kids all tvs were square yes and we, were, and we were watching square movies in pan and scan my mother was the first person to put blocks you know, and we, you, oh, you she's hate the them. letterboxer. She's the letterboxer. Yeah, that's so cool. Um, so uh, yeah, no, but it gets it gets it it gets me nothing. I I, I drop that in Hollywood. They were like, hey, we don't care about letterboxing. It just, that's that's from okay. Well, nothing. At least you made nothing. My nephew baby, this is nothing. <laughs> you you but you did put the forth, forth the effort. So I guess I, 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 so I, she I, got me my first internship at DC back when I was in college. So no I, kidding. I, yeah. So I she I de definitely cheated along the way. I that explains that. so much. And I don't mean about your career. I mean, how much you know and carry with you about the inner workings of the comic book industry because <laughs> you were there, like because you had people involved who helped get you the, like, all right. So who did she call at, at DC to get you there? Paul Levitz, uh, the, the, the Legion of Superhero Writers who was mm -hmm. the, yeah. So Paul, Paul and I, uh, I was 19 years old and we sat in his office. She also knew Jeanette Kahn, but Jeanette Kahn was sort of more removed from the company. Yeah. But for people to know, Jeanette Kahn was the publisher of DC for like 30 years. Yes. Um, an amazing story because she, she became publisher when she was 27. And if you can imagine being the publisher of DC Comics at the age of 27. Think about us at 27. It's like, oh, well, <laughs> maybe not you because you were you were much yeah you had more going on you've been more places than i had at that point but still. i think sometimes i was like oh yeah i could do it. i was like wait at 27 i was in charge of a whole uh -huh. division of counterterrorism for the cia but that was like i was a different person back then um i was much less slacky and I <laughs> yeah so you have to like you have to it's like dog years you gotta be like all right well all right uh, uh, Sal's 27 is like my 1920, you know, so it's... <laughs> yes, but, I, but anyway, my mother didn't did know her because they would go to executive meetings and they'd be only two women in the whole room. So they kind of... They kind of bonded over that. Gravitated towards each other. Um, and I think through her, she met Paul. Through Jeanette, she met Paul. And so her, her and Paul would... Yeah, she'd do Paul favors, right? I don't, I don't remember. They need like commentary on DVD or something. So Paul agreed to interview me for... And I was I was a huge Legion of Superheroes. That was with my nerd growing up. So really? I was very intimidated by meeting Levitz and he was super nerd. I remember the meeting was like... Dark, but to me, it was like um, going into Charlie and the Ch Chocolate Factory. It, yeah. it, was, it, it was getting the golden ticket because I'd worshipped comic books. I was in New York yeah. and, to, to, and he, he took me on a tour. You know, and b back then, DC... And the offices were super cool because the fifth floor was Mad Magazine. Oh, yeah. So you'd go in there and, you know, when Mad Magazine was the biggest, was a lot, uh, you know, and, and it looked goofy and cool. And the seventh floor was Superman. You know, it was all decorated like you walked into Metropolis. And the third floor was Batman. It looked like Gotham City. And then, like, literally you'd see where they made the comics. Yeah. And um, and then I got stuck on the ninth floor with Vertigo, which I didn't read at the time. I was like, God damn it. <laughs> <laughs> oh, during a hell of a time, though. During a hell of a time, yeah. It was... 
It was Garth Ennis and Warren Ellis and yeah, Grant Morrison. Holy crap. You know, it's funny. People. Back then, if you had gotten me an internship at DC, I probably would have been like, you couldn't get me Marvel? <laughs> now I'm like, God, what a what a what a transformative time that was. I, as a kid, I was just, I didn't know better. I would have been like, can you get me some spawn issues? I did like, Marvel the next year. <laughs> did you really do Marvel the next year? Now I was intern Marvel, yeah. Now was that because of your advantage at DC that you were able to parlay it, or did you call mom again and have her? No, I parlayed it. That was but I had already gotten the advantage. So I already there you like, go. I, right. I did an intern at DC. Can I do an intern at Marvel? And it was a bit of a step up because at DC I was literally the copy boy, like from Saturday. Oh Life. yeah. I was the guy who took all the art and photocopied. Yeah. I could I could really photocopy like no one's actually I was really bad at it, to be perfectly honest. Mm. Was it because it was a mimeograph machine? No, it was just a I boring know. ass. <laughs> That's that old. I just wanted to. Yeah, it would be cool if it was a mimeograph, and I was like cranking it and shit. Yeah, oh, you'd have some real marketable freaking, skills. Like the office. No, it was nothing. Yeah. It was bored. it was collate, collate, and staple. Mm, gotcha. It was wonderful. Yeah. Uh, now, apropos of your mom, and I'll, I'll I'll move on from this in just a minute. But uh, apropos of your mom's unpublished memoir, <laughs> yes, is that real? And do you have any desire to finish it for her? Uh... My mother wrote one page of her of her one memoir. page. Yeah, oh, that's so not even a Chris Tolkien kind no of situation. I, I found it on her desk after she died. I do remember the first sentence, um, and Lord knows I wish I wanted to read the rest of that chapter. But she, her first sentence was, "You cannot understand the '60s without drugs and rock and roll." So nice. I don't know the spot. It now, was be uh, my mother was super into psychedelics when she was in in the late '60s. Okay. Yeah, that, that sounds. Was, I, I didn't find that out till after she died, mm. but she she dated this guy, found pictures of him, and he was one of the guys who had um, invented Molly. Uh, oh my god! <laughs> and there's a Supreme Court case about it. Oh, so um, like you Google his name and you're like, oh no, this guy was a big deal. Well, it was one of those, my parents are divorced and like very they hate each other. Uh, oh. And so, oh, Seth long as the water oh, you know, it's a shame you know. and so my dad was telling me all these stories like oh you're you know that uh, uh your brother dave the guy who invented acid i was like well no that's not true and i looked right, it up like, i was like you know i found the picture oh. and i was like there was a supreme court case where he was busted for you know uh because he was like some sort of chemist who made the most wonderful psychedelics and yeah, yeah. that was my mother she 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 she, she went to the edge when she, was, <laughs> she went to the edge and then she became the uh yuppie lawyer so that's like, yeah well you know you, that's she didn't sell out she bought in Oh no, she sold out as much as she. But she did it for me and my brothers. So oh, well, that's that's the most uh, noble of causes, I think. That's the most noble of selling out. Uh, really quick, I just want to touch on Riddler. Uh, this was a book that uh, you know came from the One Bad Day Initiative, uh, as I recall. Last time we talked about it, you were like, "Yeah, no, they just told me, hey, we're doing this One Bad Day thing. You want to do Riddler?" And I said, "Sure." <laughs> yes. And you cranked that Riddler, and it ended up being uh, a definitive Riddler story. I think like it's largely. Uh, regarded as uh like one of the top riddler stories uh nowadays um but there wasn't that much competition in riddler stories it's, it's, that's, it's, a, it's a, yeah it's it's tough it's man you gotta like I, I say this all the time when it comes to riddler it's like he's a genius and most comic book writers aren't so it's like you gotta you gotta give him some other angle it can't just be like he's the cleverest son of a bitch ever because if you say riddler's the cleverest person on the planet you gotta be at least a little clever <laughs> because otherwise it doesn't work or you have to make batman an idiot you know? well and if the problem with riddler stories and, and mitch and i went back and read a bunch and we watched a bunch of tv show and they're all the same it's like the riddle and the riddler inventing's a riddle and he's like aha batman will never solve it and then batman cheats a little bit and solves it yep. and then at the end he he captures the riddler yeah and that's every single one that's just over and over and over again yeah yeah there's one of and, my one, oh god yeah, what's uh, go ahead. Oh, just order. one of my favorite Batman Adventures issues is a Riddler story in which the Riddler is like, I've got to, I've, ah, he always be beating <laughs> me. And then uh, Batman stops him at the end and he says, How did you figure it out? And Batman goes, I didn't, I guess. <laughs> and Riddler is like, and, and he's so thrilled that he sings Happy Days Are Here Again through. Oh, and that's it's, great. It's that's such a excellent. brilliantly executed sequence in which he's like, he's singing and it's like him being arraigned, him being sent to Arkham, like him being, and he's still singing the same song. And he's it's just, just so happy. It's oh, incredible. That's I was like, this, oh, is, this is the Riddler. That's wonderful. I love yeah. that ending. That's perfect. Right. But uh, but no, it's a dope ass book. And Mitch, of course, does an incredible job. I'm very excited to hear that you and he are working together again on a at least four issue miniseries. Um, yes, Brave and the Bold. It's coming out. 
in a few or four months. I don't know. The first issue oh, really? done. It's 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 the most unoriginal thing I've ever written. It's completely. I've I've I feel like I've written some original things where there's like weird stuff, but this yeah. is not. This is, uh, you know, like like they say like sometimes you know a chef will give you a, a, a very fancy meal and it's very hard to do, and then another chef will just serve you a steak. You've eaten a billion steaks before. Yes. So it's like it's hard to just make a perfect steak. Uh huh. So that's what Mitch and I are doing. This, there's no originality in this. This is yeah. us trying to make a perfect. You want to make a good burger steak. Like, <laughs> yeah, simple good burger. And so this this is um, Joker versus the Batman. Oh my god! Um, uh, but back in the day, it's a, it's a it's a year one story. Their first meeting, and you've you've read that, you've seen that on the screen. Yep. And you've you've eaten burgers your whole life. This is uh -huh. our version of that of the of the and. It, it's the challenge was could we make it scary? Could we make it frightening? Could we make mm. it disturbing? Because I neither of us are ever scared or disturbed by comics. Sure, um, yeah, that's fair. So, so that was that was our challenge. So yes, it's it's completely unoriginal, and and I've seen the first issue, and it's drawn, and it's completely brilliant. Oh. It's, it's 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 a it's it's a very high class burger. I like that. That that belongs on the cover. Completely unoriginal, Tom King, the writer. Uh, <laughs> There's no claim that this was like some. This is not Grant Morrison approaching. Well, that's and being the, like, well, you've but never nobody's seen hold, this before. Yeah, but nobody's holding your feet to the fire. You don't have to efface yourself just by you know you're selling to sell this thing, and you're like, ah, you know, it sucks. And it's like, whoa, no, it doesn't suck. No, no that's what I'm saying. It's, it's not. I know, I know. It's I not know, original. I, like, don't be looking not, for us to break the mold. It's, it's just not. It's not a mold. It's original in that its approach is original and its beauty is original. And it's the way we tell the stories. We have a whole different way of telling a Joker story. All that stuff is original. But yeah. I don't want to come on here and be like, guess what? We, we broke it. We're going to tell a Joker versus Batman Definitive story. Definitive Batman they're, versus they're Joker. They're both yeah. disturbed characters. You know, like that's, I'm not going to bullshit with you. Your that's audience fair. is too smart with that. No, no that's true. I got to treat you guys like adults. Well, we thank are. you. Uh, Speaking of Batman and breaking the molds, obviously, uh, you are apparently working, and I just found out about this off mic, but uh, apparently we can talk about it. If we can't, it'll be cut. Uh, Penguin series. Yes, yes, I'm what's, doing it. This, it. It was vaguely announced, and I haven't even tweeted about it or anything. Nice, I'll take a vague announcement, but like, <laughs> okay, so obviously we're getting a Penguin show. Which, yes. Synergy. Uh, is it comic book Penguin, the Batman Penguin what are we looking at here? It, well, how it's, much can you share? It's an incontinuity book. Okay. Uh, it's ongoing. Oh. In, uh, so as many issues as you guys are willing to buy, I'll write. Uh, it's got a great artist who's not been announced, so I don't want to put anything out there. Fair. Mm -hmm. And um, the basic concept is we wanted to do a penguin that was, you know, Scorsese penguin. That was... <laughs> A Coppola penguin. Not this is this is not cartoon penguin. This is not Tim Burton penguin. This is yeah. gangster penguin. This is okay. like he's he's a very very evil, uh, very mean, very bitter little man. Uh, who, if you've been reading the Batman books, he's been kicked out of Gotham. Yes, uh, by by his children, and 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 so this is the book of how he comes back to Gotham and takes back his empire. Awesome. And All it's, right. It's, it's about the meanest. It's about the meanest, cruelest gangster, and all he wants is Gotham City. Oh, okay. And, and so, so that's that's what it's about. Yeah, and it's it's it. it's it's horribly dark and horrible. It's funny because I mean, we'll talk about it later. But I'm writing Wonder Woman and Penguin, and yes. it's literally the the meanest, horrible, worst, no morals character, and Wonder Woman, who's the highest, most moral character in DCU, and, and I I alternate between them. <laughs> uh, it's a very it's, it's a, they're they're very bizarre sort of poles of the DCU, but yeah, yeah. But I'm sure that helps you with the process where you're like, okay, I'm 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 out of the gutter. I'm gonna go into the like I'm gonna go to Paradise Island now and try and like <laughs> get this get this cleared up. Uh, you you yeah. you talked about it. We're going to talk about it a little bit because uh, the announcement has been uh, at the recording at, at the time of this release. It will have been announced on the West Coast, so we'll be okay. Uh, but you're you're doing Wonder Woman, and oh, yeah, uh, the with, main with, Wonder Woman book, the main Wonder Woman book, getting a relaunch number one, Wonder Woman number idea. one, uh, and uh, Daniel Samper on art, which I don't believe oh you worked God. together. We've never worked together before. Just uh, hot off the heels of Dark Crisis. Uh, Yes, and it was such an easy pitch because I was he's, he's like, do I have to draw 50 Green Lanterns? Like, no, 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 just one Wonder Woman. He's like, I'm in! <laughs> I could do that! <laughs> <laughs> so much easier than yeah. drawing every single character. Right, on on one page. On please. one page, and then having a panel too on that same page. Yeah. Uh, 
yes, uh, I, I could not be more excited about this. This is this is a. I wouldn't say it's a dream come true because I did not want to do this at all. But really, is this oh, like? Yes, no. This yeah. is, I'm being set up for failure, my friend. I, um, <laughs> Uh, you know, we talked to before about a, a pitch down the middle, uh, getting Greg Smallwood. This is this is a pitch right at my head, and I'm expected to hit it. It's just yeah. It um, the 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 challenge with Wonder Woman is almost the opposite of the challenge coming on Batman all those years ago when I was a younger writer. We're looking yeah. back on that sort of the history of Batman, and being like, so many people have done so much good work on Batman, just career defining work that lives in the conscience of America. How yeah. can I contribute to that? Like every good, every idea has been taken and every idea has been made good. Sure. Wonder Woman, it's like so many fantastic people have worked on this book and <laughs> put every idea and none of them have worked. <laughs> yes. Okay. Because uh, that's a, that's like a, a secret shame when it, when it Not comes to Wonder Woman. Not none of them. Some of them are brilliant. George some of them Perez are brilliant. did some brilliant stuff. Uh, William Mr. Loeb did some brilliant stuff. Greg Rucker did some brilliant stuff. Cliff Chang did some brilliant yep. stuff. No, there are some highlights in the yes. history of even and the William Marston stuff from the very beginning is very subversive and incredibly weird. Which, it is you know, weird, give it some credit for being the weird in the 40s. I agree. Yeah, no, that's true. Um, but uh, but yeah, no, so you're up so you're 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 set up to failure because yes, Wonder it, Woman's a tough book. It's a tough book to sell, it's a tough book to uh to I'm sure it's a tough book to 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 write. But um was is. this so which which editor uh tricked you <laughs> into having to take over what like where did where did the genesis of this take place like how was it like oh we're thinking wonder woman uh we expect to see a pitch in the next couple of days like i i think i'm trying i mean i have done since i left batman which is some years now because it's yes. like that's what pre-pandemic so you know three to four years now mm -hmm. Uh, I've done just these sort of out of continuity black labels or partially in continuity or I mean, yeah. Supergirl was in continuity, but sort of removed uh, books. And I was like, okay, I've done that for four or five, four years now. I need a new challenge. Cause if I just write 12 issue series for the rest of my life, I mean, eventually you're going to write 30 of them. And one of them is going to be like the 30th worst one. And so you're right. like, <laughs> I, you know, you try to be surprising. You try to take on new challenges. And, and I was like, man, I really don't. I'm kind of dreading, jumping back into monthly comics. And I was like, when you, there's something you dread that makes you better, it makes you scared, it makes you good. Okay. Um, so I told DC I was ready to jump back into continuity. And, uh, and they're like, the Penguin? I was like, okay. Uh, so I took the <laughs> Penguin. And, uh, and I was, I guess in the back of my mind, I was like, I hope I get Superman. I wrote up in the sky. Like that's my favorite, but I'm, I'm, I'm like Snape from Harry Potter. I'm always, I never get the class I want. So, uh, Oh, I see. Yeah. So, <laughs> so, so uh, uh, then, but then they said, Josh, Josh, one of my best friends in the world is going to Superman. I was like, Oh yeah, that's a perfect fit. That'll be perfect. That'll just be great. And it is very good. If you haven't read this, you want it's brilliant. And it's, yeah. it's just, it's the first takeoff is Dawn of DC and sort of this Renaissance DC is going through and Josh is leading the way. And it's wonderful. Yeah. Uh, and so I was like, I was like, I don't, I, so, but then, so then, they, then they came to me and they, so Brittany Holzer, the brilliant editor who worked with me on, uh, she did some Batman with me. She did some Mr. Miracle with me, but she did Supergirl with me where she was the main editor. Ah. And so she said, well, we, we, we did Supergirl and we love that. Can we do it again with Wonder Woman? Mm. and that was the pitch to me to sort of do with to do to wonder do with wonder Woman with you with supergirl and i said and i was <laughs> i was like oh, i don't know that's kind of scary yeah. uh and i remembered i was at george press's funeral about almost about a year ago yeah and uh, i remember he recorded you know obviously he knew he was going to pass and at his funeral they played like an interview he had done talking about his whole career and one of the things he said they asked him what he's most proud of and he said well i after crisis, you know, I took on wonder woman. I went into like the office and uh, nobody wanted to do that book. It never succeeded. And I succeeded with it. And yeah. to me, that was just one of my greatest, one of the things I'm most proud of in my whole, and I was like, George Perez, my God, Avengers, you know, uh, uh, X, X, not X, <laughs> Titans, <laughs> Titans. I know. Um, but they did, he, he must've yeah. done some X-Men in the wrong way. Uh, yeah. Just a, a billions of the best books of all comics, the best. Yeah. Events. And I was, I was like, and Wonder Woman was the one that he's most proud of because it was the biggest challenge. So I flash back to George. I felt I felt him calling me a coward. Yeah. Uh, and uh, 
and I said, yeah, and I said, let's do it. And then I think at the same time, I found out Daniel was going to draw it. And I was like, oh, wow, okay. They're giving me like an A-list huge star on this book. Yeah. Uh, someone who can... So I, I was I, the problem with Wonder Woman is that she needs a certain awesomeness to come through. I don't know how to, I don't know how to put it, but like she needs a little Jim Lee. That's that's the best way. I, a little bit of gravitas, some it. kind of oomph behind the book. It yeah, can't just be like, a stealth Wonder Woman book. You got to make it. Yeah, you got to make be, a big dent. You know, like when I was a kid, you, you, if Jim was on a book and drawing it, you knew it was cool. Yeah. And that's that's what Daniel's like, oh, this will be cool because it'll have that kind of vibe. That sort of yeah. Jim Lee, Rob Liefeld, Todd McFarlane. Not, you know, th those guys, when they were on books when I was a kid, I was like, that's the book I have to buy. That's true. Dan Daniel can give you that. Um, and and so so I, I was I was I was hyped for that. Yeah. Remember when uh, what was it? Bill Mesner Loeb's did. Uh did wonder woman and i think mike deodato jr did yeah, the mike art on that one. oh yeah and it was like it was beautiful even, with the artemis arc yeah yes even if you didn't like it you have to admit it's it's the best looking dc book on the shelf at that like in that on that month you know what i mean and it's like i'm a huge mr lois i met him once he was super cool yeah um I've still never met him. I hear he's a really cool guy. I, I love he's his had a work hard, on hard, hard life. My I God. know, I know. I'm I, I commit. I contributed to his Kickstarter back in the day, or Indiegogo, or whatever it was. And I'm happy to see that like things. At least last time we checked, that he's yeah in he's a better place. So, yeah, that's why here too. Yeah, but uh, I loved his Max when he was like helping Keith like write oh. the dialogue of the Max. And, well, he uh, he wrote my favorite issue of all comics of all time, Flash Fifty Four. So uh, I've, 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 I've cut out pages on the wall of my bathroom. <laughs> and, and and it's not uh, original art, right? Because uh... <laughs> no, I own no pages from Flash. I own a page of Flash Fifty, which he wrote, which is above my desk. But mm -hmm. I've never seen a page of Flash Fifty Four. No, uh, if it ever comes up, I will bid shit for. I'll bid terrible for it. Don't I don't pay. know that one. It's um. It's it, it's in the best of Flash book. If you get any best of Flash book, it's always included. It's just it's Flash uh, is it Wally West is on a plane, and it's when he's he's less. It's a depowered Wally West. He just can uh, kind of run faster. He's not like I can throw my dimensions this way and that. Yeah. Uh, and he's he's on a plane. He makes friends with the stewardess. A terrorist comes on the plane. He fights the terrorist. He wins. But in fighting the terrorist, they blow a hole in the plane. The stewardess gets sucked out, and. Wally Caesar gets sucked out and he's like, oh, she's going to die. Like, there's nothing I can do about it. And he's like, all right, I'm going to go after her. And he jumps. And the whole issue is him falling from that plane, trying to, and she, he can't fly. All he can do is run fast. Yeah. And it's, it's just him trying to save this stewardess. Um, uh, he has, he has no reason to save. it's an utter suicide mission. There's no reason to think he won't die when he hits the ground. Yeah. And it's just, it's just about sort of heroism and ingenuity. And it's a wonderful story. With, cool. with art by Greg LaRocque, who is also on Legion Superheroes. Yeah, I've looked at the cover, and it's, it's exciting. I, I'm, all right, I'm going to read that tonight. Thanks. I recommend Later. it. Uh, so with Wonder Woman, can I mean, okay, so far, the only, because, you know, full disclosure, I got a chance to talk to a rep at DC, good guy, I don't want to name him, put him out there, but, uh, you know, he, he let me know, Tom King, Daniel Samper, uh, Wonder Woman, Technically, it's 801, but it also has a big number one on the cover. It starts uh, with 800, though, because 800 has a huge first appearance oh. of, 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 a, of a big... I have a, There's a 10-page story Daniel and I are going to do. 800 is a... Uh, Becky like, and Michael going to wrap up their brilliant run, and then the last 10 pages will be sort of a preview or a prologue. Okay. Um, you can start with number one. You don't have to read the prologue if you if it's okay but there is i just i'm just telling collectors out there yes there's a big first appearance in that oh. in wonder woman 800 so this is inside info for 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 you guys yeah make sure to um, pre-order your books uh yeah a a, a a big new superhero player in the dc universe oh. <laughs> yeah are you saying for a long time are, are you suggesting that the hierarchy of the dc universe is about to change <laughs> Everything will be different. <laughs> oh, that's a Marvel promise. I don't know about that. Everything will be different. Everything is different forever. Okay. You know, that's actually in this one case, I, I can actually say I think that's true. The hierarchy oh. of the DC universe is about to change. Oh, my God. <laughs> Wonder Woman 800. I'm going out on a limit. I'm saying it. I'm going, Sal. Here I Fair am. Fair enough. Yes. Well, you know, the, the, the dozens and dozens of fans that watch this show will definitely be uh, God bless you, dozens and dozens. Uh, Same but, people who read Gotham Year One. That's best, both of us are cousins. very excited about that book. Uh, yes. So we uh, so we can't talk too much about specifically Wonder Woman 
So let me let me transition a little bit, but check out Wonder Woman. The art's fantastic. If I it's about one. it's about Wonder Woman as an outlaw. I should say the first book okay. is about her. Yes, it's it's the way I got into it was making her. I in the same way I write two different kinds of books. I write books where 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 uh, sad men look into their navels and wonder about their existential crisis. Um, I love those books, uh, and I write a different kind of book. I write I write I wrote Supergirl and and. Um, uh, Superman up in the sky, which are, I mean, they're harrowing books, like bad things happen. Oh yeah. Uh, but uh, so, but yeah. at the end, essentially what every issue is about is how awesome the main character is. <laughs> just how awesome they are. It's not it's just, a, but it's not like a Herculean, like look at their 12 feet. Although we do get that in up in the sky. It's about how good they are. Yeah. It's about how good they are. Yeah. It's not about like, Oh, they can lift more than, but they make, they're presented with a moral choice. They make a moral choice. Uh, they're 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 pushed to their utter limits and they don't fall. Uh, yeah. So so this is that kind of book. This is not a nasal gaving book. This is a book <laughs> that is about how awesome Wonder Woman is. It's about yeah. trying to tell people. I, I write this book for my. I have a twelve year old girl. She dresses up. She dressed up as Wonder Woman for like three Halloweens in a row. I write it for her specifically. Yeah. Um. And and but also for for me who wants this is the Wonder Woman I always wanted to see like the ultimate cool kick ass Wonder Woman. I love it. I, I I am adding it to my FOC. I'm very excited to check it out. Uh, you are, we, and this is this is the thing they were like, don't don't talk about this. Uh, right. Don't talk about. Oh. Uh, no no not Wonder Woman. This next thing, but uh, the Let's Brain see. Trust at uh, DC Studios. Yes. I remember that. I did. Can, it, yes. Yeah. Can you explain what it is <laughs> that you do there? <laughs> like, <laughs> I know that sounds really insulting, but I mean it like where it's like, you know, it just, it just said like, oh, and Tom King is here, <laughs> you know, like, and he, like he's among the names, you know, and it's like, what, what are you like? Uh, are, it, because I remember there being like, you know, over at uh, the other guys, there was this uh, group of people who helped, like, who were from the comics, who talked, who helped guide. Yeah, Bendis and, and Joe Quesada was the, yeah, was, exactly. was called the, the committee, I think they called it. Yeah, that. the committee that was uh, quickly dissolved. But uh, that group where it was like, oh, no, this character wouldn't do this, or this is a story you should recommend. You know, I, I God only knows what the hell they did in there, because I have no idea. But uh, is that kind of the idea of, like, there being a committee of people who are, like, not purists, but fans slash experts. Uh, I mean, it's tough because I there's there's stuff I can talk about and stuff I can't. Exactly. I mean, so but, I don't want to. I want. Yeah. I no. 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 But it's line. a totally fair question. James Gunn is a super nerd and he's super creative. Right. And he's sort of the creative force behind all of this. Him and Peter, Peter Saffron. Yes. And he reached out to a group of screenwriters and myself. Fantastic. Um, amazing whose names he's put out there yes um and and to, to work on making these movies and tv shows as good as they can be uh and it was his way of saying you know we we need nerds in the room we need writers that this is going to be that this sort of dc renaissance this dc revolution is going to be very much a storytelling like like that like th it's story first it's we right. want to tell fantastic stories like that is where we are starting and stopping and so he got a bunch of people and i was lucky enough to be one of the people who knows how to tell a story and, and sort of be um in that room with a bunch of brilliant people um to to help james sort of achieve his vision which is slowly which is coming together and is is brilliant i'm i'm still working on all that stuff uh, all all five of us are um and uh, no, i and uh we're we're deeply enmeshed in the process now as it sort of kicks up and it's i mean it's it's bigger than i mean they're, they're creating a whole new world right like yeah um from the ground up and and has to be like marvel but not be marvel it has to be uh like dc but not it has to be something new but also yes. original and it has to deal with all this all the problems that you have to deal with as a comic writer where does continuity fit in? You know, which characters are people's favorites? How do we serve those characters? All the stuff that we everyone deals every day as a comic book writer. Um, all those questions have to be asked, you know, with a billion dollar tag next to them. Sure. Uh, uh, so yeah, it's, it's all it's 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 all that stuff. So yeah. And in addition to that, we're getting Supergirl Woman of Tomorrow as an effing movie. Yes. So exciting. Are you writing it? 
<laughs> I can't tell you. I can't. Okay. Tell you. <laughs> because we know you've written screenplays for DC before. I have. In, yes. In the form I have. Of the New Gods, which was very exciting when that was a thing, as long as it is. Uh, but uh, yeah, Supergirl. Just speaking to the to to the there was, fact there that there's a knowledge. moment where we all went around the room and sort of gave our credits of what they had done in a room of screener, very successful screenwriters who doing major big things. Sure, it got to me, and I was like, "Oh yeah, I'm the guy who wrote the things that never got made." <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah. But yeah. Uh, but you're like my mom invented this the the letterboxing. I yeah, mean, my mom invented so that's the, <laughs> like, oh, I go. Like, yeah, you're in. Well, you're that's in. why you're in this room. That's okay, cool. You're, you're like, and I, you know, and I wrote Heroes in Crisis. All right. Yeah, I wrote Heroes. That's it. I wrote the beloved <laughs> Heroes in Crisis. <laughs> but uh, but uh, I mean, like, can can you talk a little bit about how Supergirl, Woman of Tomorrow, ended up on that list? I mean, it's 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 nothing. Um, uh, it's as simple as James read the book and felt it matched his, what he wanted to bring forward, that sort of energy that he wanted to bring forward, uh, which is, I, it's hard to talk about without saying braggy. I don't know. It's, it's stupid, but uh, 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 it's a good book. Stand by it. <laughs> I love it. I absolutely love it. I, you know, it, it became this bestseller. And I was like, every copy that goes out is wonderful. Cause I know people are going to fall in love with this book. Yep. Um, it's empowering, and uh, every every uh, woman I know uh, either owns a copy because I got it for them, or they loved it when they read it. Uh, my wife, for example, is just in love with that series, uh, just singing its praises. Uh, and I think that a movie hopefully will, you know, we're a comic book group. I, I love comics so much, and I love movies as well. And I'm so excited that there's going to be a movie, but I'm also really excited that it will put a light on this book that still doesn't have a hardcover <clears throat> and uh, maybe it will actually. i'm trying i'm trying uh uh we're trying to just get more copies out i, mean, I know with, right with all There's the just... paper shortages it's hard to get more just to get more books on the shelf yeah it's been, it's been sold out and every time they announce anyone has a copy that sells out yep uh so yeah i um i mean i think what he wants to do is is is, is something modern like like the supergirl in that she's not you know 50s kind of you know no. she's, she gets away from sort of that that aesthetic she she's she's tougher and cooler you feel like you could know her in a modern but it's also like i mean her origin story in that book i i retell it but that's her origin story from 1962 exactly like, that's like it, it there's nothing in there that's not drawn from the history of comics right there's, there's nothing in 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 that book that's um and there's big silver agey ideas, but it's all grounded in an emotional realism. And I think that that's that that's that's the sort of vision that that James had. He's like, like, and I mean, and you can see it with Peacemaker. You can yeah. see it with Guardians of the Galaxy. I mean, th those are big, huge, bizarre ideas that are funny and weird. But at the center of them, at their core, is like this very emotional, yeah, uh, um, moments. You know, Peacemaker is about a guy who's dad is a piece of shit and he has to come to reckon with that yes and 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 whether he is a piece of shit like his dad or not like right. it's a huge um emotional journey and it's it, but it's surrounded by this fun weird i mean there's a matter eater lad joke in that <laughs> that's <laughs> true right yeah like um and and then the the same with guardians i mean guardians is this these should be shitty characters eating but but the heart of that you know is about the friendship between these people who can't make friends yeah and and how they sort of form that sort of core family. So I, I think that's what appealed to James is, is is it hit those notes of being classic and modern at the same yeah. time. I'm excited because we're going to get a canonized definition of how to pronounce Ruthai. <laughs> Ruthie, her name's Ruthie. I'll tell you, <laughs> Ruthie. I've talked to the producers. It's Ruth. It's she's named after my niece, whose name is Ruthie with an I E. Okay. Uh, so I I I, I pronounced it. My niece is now four and five, about to turn five. Yeah. Um, so, so she, she knows that, that that's her. Um, and, and anytime anyone posts fan art from that, I send it to her so she can see the different versions of herself. And she, <laughs> she very much, she very much likes it. I love it. That's so, so great. I'll, I'll, I'll post some, some pictures of she's, she's the best. Yeah. Uh, I'm very excited about that. Uh, I'm excited about your future at DC studios. And also I'm happy to hear that you're continuing with more books That it's not pulling you too far away from the comic book industry 
because you know. Yeah, well, I'm I can insane. imagine it's that's my problem. It's <laughs> <laughs> I get nervous when I'm not writing. Like this week, I was supposed to take the week off and just do research for some of these movie projects, and I just got my itch itchy and said I have to write something. So then I started an issue. Now I just have to finish it. Mm. Uh, um, so yeah, no, I. I, I know I mean, comics are my first love. It's still the medium I go to, you know, when I fall asleep at night, I'm reading a comic book. When I go on vacation, I'm reading a comic book. Um, yeah. So I, I, I can't get away from how, how fun they are and how, and how rewarding they are to write and, and be read. And hopefully, I mean, hopefully like com comics are kind of suffering right now. I think people know that that's not like a shock. We, yeah. we went we went way up in the pandemic because everyone yeah. got stuck inside and we just wanted to collect anything. And comic books were like, oh, this is going to kill us and actually made us a little richer. Okay. Um, and then after the pandemic, I was like, oh, we're outside again. We can fucking kiss and get stoned. Why would we buy comics? <laughs> and, uh -huh. and, and, uh, and so comics have dipped a little bit in the last. And so hopefully, like, I, I want to tie the... I want to be sort of a bridge between the DC studios and the comics to be like, these are all tied together. The stuff you love about the movies is going to be in the comics. And the yes. stuff you love about the comics is going to be in the movies and the TV shows. And, you know, a, a, a rising tide lifts all boats and all that stuff. I want, I, want, I, I, want, I want to make sure the tide is rising for everyone. So far, it's been a great rollout. I mean, obviously, you know, with Gunn's uh, introduction to uh, the initiative, uh, Gods and Monsters, and him promoting it, and it never it's never too far from a comic book. You know, like, the announcements are always tied in with some kind of graphic that is pulled directly from the comics. It's not like an actor's face or a director's name. It's, it's this book or these characters. I mean, for God's sake, Creature Commandos. Like you, I mean, I'm sure you saw Demetrius's Twitter feed. He was just like, "Oh, what? <laughs> okay, well, that's pretty exciting." Uh, that's but, that's the first kickoff. That'll be the the launch of the new universe. Will be Creature Commandos. You've been firing all cylinders, man. I'm very excited to see what's next. Uh, but I've been very happy with what you've been uh, churning out. I hope uh, people take a minute and go back and pick up year one uh pick up supergirl woman's mark you can find it uh there are plenty of april of... mid mid april new supergirls are coming good so, so it, it'll be it'll be everywhere you can buy let me tell uh, you something in, uh, a couple uh, about a year ago you could go to a couple of uh, long boxes and pick up a plenty of copies of supergirl oh. Woman of tomorrow I... and now uh all those copies are thirty dollars i don't even <laughs> I don't even have a copy because I gave away my copies. It's sort of a thank you to Third Eye Comics. So I don't even yes, have a copy. So I saw I'm looking forward to the new version so I can read it. Yeah, that was so cool. I saw that uh, just really quick. You went to a local shop, uh, Third Eye Comics. You gave away like a ton of copies of Super Bowl of Tomorrow. And I hunted through my house, got every comp I could find and, and yeah. signed them and gave them away as so the comic circuit. And, yeah. yeah, that book, uh, if you have a niece, a daughter, uh, a friend, and you have the ability give that book away give it to them because it's yeah. such a such a important piece uh if you're a daughter of a father or a father of a daughter it's a good book love it uh tom thanks for being here thanks everybody for watching oh, wait, wait, can, I, can i say i just want to say I, I do a lot of signings and people constantly come up and they say i really loved you on side sal's show i i didn't give this oh. book a shot until sal recommended it i <laughs> i const i do a lot of podcasts i don't get a lot of feedback but when i'm on your show and I, your fans are so wonderful oh, thank you. and 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 they, they talk so highly about you and they're so nice to me and so i just wanted to, to, to just say thank you at the end because that just means the absolute world to me that what, what you think thank you to you and thank you to your fans because it, it, guys, it really yeah. has done so so much for me personally it's put food on the table of my children and that's just the greatest honor you can give a dude so th thank you i appreciate it thank you man i'm uh the the the, the audience is uh one of the few greatest pleasures of my life. And uh, I, I'm so thankful that I'm able to in any way pay it forward because, uh, you know, I, like you, you know, growing up, you're reading comics and there was a barrier. It's just like, it's a story. You don't even really pay attention to the names until, you know, you're of age to sure. care about that kind of thing. Of course, yeah. And then to find out that like, they are, you know, people who exist who need <laughs> you know more and uh and, and to, to have an opportunity to say anything positive about what they do and and to be like hey pick this up and then to see it you know go out into the world that's like it's such a it's a it's a rare pleasure and it's like it's an unexpected benefit of this job that i 
wrenched from the <laughs> ether that <laughs> should not that should not exist that I never imagined would exist. So very, I'm very lucky, and uh, and we get to chat about this kind of thing, you know, every once in a while, you and I, and I'm very thankful for that as well. So, Anytime, uh, man. thank you, sir, and uh, thank you all for watching. Check out those books, grab them, and uh, congratulations on the. Uh, the, the new opportunities, and uh, I'm really looking forward to Wonder Woman. Check that out as well. Uh, what's the release date on Wonder Woman number one? God, don't ask me hard questions. I don't know. <laughs> these. Oh, my God. Suddenly. Actually, I don't know either. It's not, in my, it's not on my press list. I have no idea. I believe it'll be sometime this summer would be my guess. There you go. Yeah, I think it's going to Keep be an good. eye out. You know, oh, yeah. Tell, tell your yeah. local comic book store. I want Wonder Woman 800 and 801. Put Wonder Woman on my pull list. 800 if you want the debut of the big character and want to You got to get the Yeah, you yeah. got to get the debut if you want the and and, and the and you know, then resell that one and get the second print, you know. Yeah. You, know how, you guys know you're smart. You know how to play the game. Yeah. Uh yeah. and then and then yeah, Wonder Woman number 1 is just a kick ass issue. It's 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 it starts a whole new status quo. You don't have to know anything about any of the characters. It's it's big, it's bold, it's it's, it's violent, it's wonderful, it's cool. Nice. <laughs> All right, so long everybody.